Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see keratophytes of 13th December 2023. So first of all, we are going to see the Hindu PDF and we are going to pick out the articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And later on, we are going to see like in how many perspectives we can think about that topic. And we are interconnecting the subjects as well. Okay, so that interconnecting of subjects is very much important from your mains point of view because nowadays questions they are not asking in a single subject point of view. They are interconnecting the subjects as well. So to get good marks and to clear this UPSC means this interconnecting of subjects is very important that we are going to learn from this Hindu news analysis. And if you are watching this Rathod's IS news analysis, so watch daily so that I can assure you that within four to five months of time, you are going to understand like how to interlink the subjects and even that will be helpful to improve your thought process. Okay, so now let us see today's Hindu PDF. I am taking the Delhi edition and one more thing I have to show here is about prelims booster course. So we in Rathor Science, we launched this prelims booster course on Monday. So here in this course, we are going to give you a daily schedule. Okay, daily schedule like what you have to read on which day along with the dates. And we are also focusing exclusively on this revision. Because many students, they are not focusing on revision. So revision is key for success. Because how many times you are revising the topic, that much you can remember. Okay, so if you are going to examination hall, why you are getting confusion? Why you are getting anxiety? Because of lack of revision. So you will be getting confusion between the statements. To avoid that confusion, revision is very important and that we are focusing here. And we are going to give you the schedule. You will be reading and you will be writing the test and again you will be revising. Okay, so the work you have to do for the next five months is read, take test, revise. Read, take test and revise. And you will be also having a full length test from February. So from February, every Sunday you will be having a full length test. And you will be having weekly twice live discussions by the faculty. And on Sunday, you will be having a revision class from 6 to 8 p.m. Okay, overall, you will be having three live classes in a week. And we are also going to give you current FIDs notes of last one year. And even there will be revision of current FIDs in the revision classes. And we are going to provide one-to-one -one mentorship and even mentorship calls will be there for you. So for all these things, the charges that we are giving is around 4,000 rupees. Okay, so just you are giving 4,000 rupees to clear your prelims. Okay, so try to join this course. And if you want to join this course, you can contact me on the number which is given on the screen. That is 8074765513. And even we have WhatsApp on the same number, you can text me on WhatsApp. And even on Telegram also, you can text me so that I will be addressing your issues. And if you have problem to pay this 4000 rupees, so please contact me so that we are going to provide a possible solution for this. Okay, so this is about this course. It is exclusively very, very useful. Okay, try to join this. Okay, so that you can clear your prints for sure. So exclusively our mission is to clear prelims 2024. Okay, now let us go back and let us see today's important articles. So this is front page. So first important article is Lok Sabha passes bill for women's quota in Jammu and Kashmir and Puducherry. So you're talking about Jammu and Kashmir and Puducherry. So now they are union territories. So recently here in the month of September itself, so there's a passage of bill. So what bill? So the passage of 106 Constitutional Amendment Act. So what does this 106 Constitutional Amendment Act talk about? Yes, this 106 Constitutional Amendment talks about women reservation. It is talking about women reservation in what? In Lok Sabha and as well as state legislative assembly and what is the percentage that is 33 percentage of women's reservation in Lok Sabha and state legislative assembly so which has been passed okay so now here the issue is so when we are going to implement this 
what is the date so in 2021 we didn't have census right so census has been delayed so census has been delayed because of covid 19 and after once we get this census data we are going to implement this 33 percentage of women reservation in Lok Sabha and state legislative assembly so now this reservation which had been extended to union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Puducherry. So here you have to know like what is the need for reservation of women. So we can connect this topic with polity. Right. So with polity we can connect under GS paper 2. And even we can connect the same topic with, with women empowerment under society. So under society we are facing a problem that women discrimination. So here we are can focus on women empowerment. We can focus on women empowerment under society point of view. Okay. So these are the some important things that you have to remember. And we are going to see this article in a very great detail. And next topic it is about retail inflation. Retail inflation rises to 5.55 percentage in month of November. So already we discussed about this retail inflation topic in our yesterday's class in detail and that is the first topic that we discussed in yesterday's class. So if you have not watched yesterday's class, so please go back and watch yesterday's class so that you will be getting details regarding retail inflation. So what is it and why we need to measure this retail inflation. So all the details are given exactly in yesterday's class. So please go back and do revise the topic. So that is about this first paper, nothing much important than these two articles, only two articles. And you can move on to the city page, there is one data. Here you can see bar graph and uh, pie diagram. So this article is talking about Delhi traffic police road crash report. So this report says that road accidents and the death because of road accidents is increased in last year says police so let me know how many of you are staying in delhi and whenever you are staying in delhi you will be getting a question in your interview like so what are the challenges faced by the students in delhi uh, what are the problems in delhi for example if you are a woman so you can get a question like so whether delhi is a safe place for women or not because recently one report said that there is increasing of crime rate against women in delhi and one more ethical dimension that I can give you here is what are the reasons behind these crimes? They are increasing in urban areas compared to rural areas. So crimes are increasing in metropolitan cities. So what is the reason? So you can connect this question with values. Okay, values. So in this way, you can connect a single subject or single topic with a different subject. So here this article says that according to Delhi traffic police road crash report 25,820 people they were prosecuted for using phones while driving and even there is increasing of casualties because of this road accidents okay so if you see the crashes so it has been increased to 5,652 crashes and deaths are 1461 deaths and injuries or 5201 injuries so if you are comparing to last year in every parameter like crashes deaths and injuries there is increase in the number and if you are talking about composition of victims so two wheelers constitute 38 percentage and others constitute 18 percentage and pedestrians are more vulnerable they are about 44 percentage Okay, so please let me know what are the measures can be taken to reduce road accidents. Okay, so what are the measures and what is this Brazilian declaration regarding this road accidents. So this is very important topic. Okay, so now let us move on. So that is the only one article important from this page. So nowadays there are many ads in newspaper rather than this news. Yes, here you can see one article that is 
मोर सेफ्टी मेजर्स एंड गुड हॉस्टल्स कैन हेल्प वुमेन एंटर वर्क फोर्स सो एक्चुअली वन प्रॉब्लम दैट वी आर फेसिंग इज वुमेन वर्क फोर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इज वेरी लो एस आर नो सो वॉट आर द रीजन्स सो वॉट आर द रीजन्स फॉर द लेस पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ वुमेन सो इन सोसाइटी वी हैव पेट्रियारिकल माइंड सेट एस आर नो पेट्रियारिकल माइंड सेट इज वन इम्पॉर्टेंट रीजन एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट सो वुमेन दे हैव प्रॉब्लम ऑफ सेक्शुअल अब्यूज एंड देर इज इंक्रीज इंसिडेंस ऑफ वायलेंस अगेंस्ट वुमेन एंड इवन सो वुमेन दे आर वर्क विथ केयर वर्क फॉर एल्डरली एंड चिल्ड्रन इन देयर होम एंड वन मोर थिंग हेयर इज देर इज लैक ऑफ सेफ्टी and if you see here women access to higher education is less women access to higher education is less in many areas child marriages are happening okay so these are the some important reasons why there is low contribution of women to workforce so this article says that especially when we are providing the safety measures so one thing that will come into our mind whenever we are talking about safety measures of women at workforce is vishaka guidelines so you have to know about what are these guidelines so these guidelines are talking about safety should be provided safety should be provided in the workplace for women okay so here whenever we are providing some safety measures to women and even good hostel services so because of lack of hostels also women they are not coming from their home to enter into workforce so whenever we are providing the good hostels facilities and safety measures then we can we can raise or we can see there will be improvement of women participation in the workforce so whenever women they are contributing uh, to the workforce then automatically we can increase our gdp right so this is about this topic and if you move on in this page you can see there is one article that is governor threatens financial emergency in kerala as row with cm reaches now cm reaches new low so the key word i found here is financial emergency So we are talking about emergency provisions. They are present in our constitution. So I said, right? So we have national emergency. We have state emergency, or we can also call it as president rule. And next one is financial emergency. So which are the articles talking about these three emergencies? So first we have Article three fifty two, next one is Article three fifty six, next one is Article three sixty. So regarding this financial emergency, Article three sixty is talking about this. So till now we had not faced this financial emergency, but now there is a threat of financial emergency in Kerala. So please let me know how many of you are from Kerala, and please let me know what is happening in Kerala. Shruti, please tell me. okay so here you have to know about what is this financial emergency and there is a high chance of getting question regarding this financial emergency in your prelims so we are going to see that okay no worry and you can directly move on to this editorial page so in editorial page so we had good chunks of articles so important from our upsc point of view so i don't know what happened to this system is going very slow i think so okay so i will let you know which are the articles which are present in our editorial page so in the meanwhile this page will be get loaded okay So here the first and the foremost important topic is patents. 
okay so patent so here you have to know like what is patent and what are the tenure of this patents and what are the advantages and issues of the patents so that is very very important and apart from this there is one more article which appeared in our editorial page it is very important that is about anti terror law so here is anti terror law means we are going to see about uap that is unlawful activities prevention act so why why we need to talk about this unlawful activities prevention act now because here a judgment which is given by division bench of jammu and kashmir that it it cleared the la last hurdle for the release so it said that you have to release journalist and the name of the journalist is fahar shah so because of this yes we have to know about this uapa and this article which is talking about jammu and kashmir with election supreme court should have given a deadline for restoration of statehood so actually now the issue which is present before jammu and kashmir is when we are going to give the statehood to jammu and kashmir so this article says that we can come up with elections and we can restore statehood of this jammu and kashmir as soon as possible and one more important article it is about the treatment for this sickle cell anemia disease okay so that is approved by casgway okay so you have to know about what is a sickle cell disease and how we can go for treatment to this gene therapy okay so this is very very important from your science and technology point of view okay and now let us see this text and context page so here you can see one important article that is india's extreme rainfall corridor so this topic is about india's extreme rainfall corridor so here this article says that how has indian monsoon affected by this global warming and there is a new study what it is saying regarding extreme rainfall and even what is the significance of this rainfall okay and even there are number of studies they had been improving the forecast and they are saying how to reduce the risk associated with large rainfall events so now let us see like what are the details to are given in this article so here every aspect of monsoon has been affected by global warming so what is the meaning of global warming whenever there is increase in the temperature of our planet earth that is called as global warming so what are the reasons behind this global warming so because of increasing of greenhouse gas emissions for example carbon dioxide methane water vapor etc and the total seasonal rainfall also had trended downwards for more than 7 decades so from le from le 70 years onwards there is decreasing of rainfall that is seen so why what is the reason because of this global warming so because of this global warming whenever there is differential heating of land and as well as ocean so that is to because of global warming so we are seeing there is a downward trend of downward trend of seasonal rainfall in india so the so called large scale extreme rainfall events they actually simultaneous or near simultaneous heavy rain episodes that are seen across highway that extends especially in the parts of west bengal odisha and gujarat rajasthan so actually because of this global uh, warming and now you are seeing that there might be a change in the rainfall pattern especially some states of west bengal odisha rajasthan and gujarat they are going to get heavy rainfall okay so the hypothesis need to be tested in models but its implications for improving forecast of such events is undeniable so here we have to focus on the early warning system and we need to have this kind of forecast such that we can understand what is going to be happen in the future and based on that we will be prepared with the with the steps okay so this is the thing which mainly said by this article and you can move on to this news page so here you can see first important article that is rajya sabha passes bill for appointment of cec and ec so who is the cec that is chief election commissioner and ec is our natimat election commissioner 
So Rajya Sabha, it is Chief Election Commissioner and next one is Election Commissioner. So we have one Chief Election Commissioner and two Election Commissioners. So we have three members totally in this ECI, that is Election Commission of India. So Rajya Sabha which passed the bill, okay, that is Chief Election Commissioner and other Election Commissioners appointment, condition, service and the term of the office bill. So this bill which guide about the appointment of CEC and as well as ECs. Okay, so we have to see what are the some important facts regarding the CEC and EC. So who are eligible? So what is the tenure? So what are the powers? So how can we remove this CEC and EC? So all these things are very very important. And I uh, request you to open your Lakshmi Kant book and open this constitutional bodies chapter. The first one will be Election Commission of India. So go through that topic once. And if you move on, you can see there is one report, it is very very important. That is 74 percentage of Indians could not afford healthy diet in 2021. So in 2021, 74 percentage of people they had not able to offer for this healthy diet. So more than 74 percentage of Indians they could not offer healthy diet in 2021 so it is according to food and agriculture organization of united nations okay 2020 that percentage was 76.2 percentage and 2021 that is 74 percentage so pakistan in pakistan about 82 percent of people they cannot afford the healthy diet and in bangladesh it is about 66 percentage so why what are the reasons So what are the reasons? The first one is increasing of food cost. Okay, increasing of food cost because of this the people they are not affording this food. And even if you see here because of this COVID-19 pandemic that led to crisis in food, crisis in fuel, crisis in feed, fertilizer and as well as finance. So these things they need to be addressed. Okay, so this is about this topic and you have to see what are the reasons for this increasing of non-affordability for the basic food. And next one here is what can be the measures taken. So if you are a district collector so, collector, so whatever the steps that you will take. So please let me know in the comment box. And next topic is Modi kicks off global artificial intelligence summit. So here you have to see what is artificial intelligence, so how it is advantageous and what are the criticisms of this artificial intelligence and you can also let me know like what is this global AI summit. So what is the relevance of this summit? Yeah and one more doubt that always pop up in, in my mind so whether, uh, whether this doubt will come to you or, or not I don't know. So whenever I'm watching news channels, so I'm I have a habit of watching news channels in our regional language. So whenever I'm watching, so I will be coming across this type of issues like uh, children or the boys or the girls they will be falling into this bore wells. And have you watched this movie of Kartavyam of an IAS officer? And Nayantara is the lead heroine of that uh, movie. So actually, we are having many developments in science and technology. And we are even reaching sun and we are going to reach Mars etc. But why we don't have any technology to remove the children who are falling in these bore wells. So many children they lost their life whenever they are playing in the fields and whenever while playing whenever they are suddenly an accident whenever they are falling in these bore wells. Yes there is no technology now. Okay, We are using here cranes as well as uh, JCBs too. Uh, go for uh, digging and uh, we are removing that children from that bore well. So rather than that, rather than using this much of time, so can't we use any equipment to bring back those people from bore wells to outside? So please let me know your uh, opinion regarding this children's falling in the bore wells because you are a civil servant. Yes, you may also come across this type of issues after once you got posting. So from now onwards, try to do research regarding the problem generally faced by the society okay so this is also one thing i want to make you inculcate 
and in this world page there is nothing much important and even the business page also I found nothing much relevant in our today's paper okay so these are the some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper now let us see the notes and if you want to get the notes of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box so this is the notes that you can download from telegram channel and one more thing here is this full name's booster course had been started so if you want to take admission so admissions are going on so till this end of this month you can join the course because for whatever the classes that we have done so you will be getting the recorded classes and the daily test and this full length test so whenever you want you can take the test and even how many times you want to give you can take the test okay so there is no restriction on the number of attempts as well so now let us see the first topic it is about Lok Sabha passes for a uh, pass bill for women's quota in Jammu and Kashmir and Puducherry in Jammu and Kashmir and Puducherry so here Lok Sabha passed a bill to extend this reservation for women in Lok Sabha and as well as the state legislative assembly so if you see the context it says that Lok Sabha recently passed two bills to extend provisions to extend provisions of constitution that is 106 constitutional amendment act so this act which grants 33 percentage of reservation to women in Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies okay so to union territories of Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir okay so this Lok Sabha which passes the two bills and they are focusing on extending of provisions of constitution that is 106 constitutional amendment act so this act which provides 33 percentage of reservation for women and now here government of UT's amendment bill which seeks to introduce women's reservation in the legislative assembly of Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir and these bill which introduced in the constitution that is constitution amendment act 106 constitutional amendment act so which had been passed by the government in the month of September 2023 and even it introduced one third member reservation in the Lok Sabha and as well state legislative assembly and even Delhi Legislative Assembly. So, women's reservation will come into effect only after an exercise of delimitation. So, whenever we are conducting the delimitation based on the census data, then we are going to imply or apply this thing. And if you are talking about some facts regarding this reservation for women in Lok Sabha and as well as in State Legislative Assembly, so we have Constitution Amendment Act. So we passed this bill and that bill which became an act and we are changing some provisions of constitution. So because of this it is called as constitutional amendment act. So this act which reserves one third of seats, one third of seats for women in Lok Sabha and state legislative assembly okay, of national capital territory of Delhi. And even there is including of a reservation of seats for scheduled caste and national scheduled tribes. So this reservation that will be effective after publication of census conducted following the act's commencement and even we are extending this reservation for how much time that is around 15 years of time period and even we can have the potential extension and this extension is determined by parliamentary action that means initially we are going to give reservation for 15 years and after that if you want to have extension so this decision will be taken by the parliament and the rotation of the seats allocated for women that will be governed by parliamentary legislation and currently how much people are there like 15 percentage of total members of 17th Lok Sabha are women so only 15 percentage and in legislative assemblies just even not more than 9 percentage of women they are present so because of this especially for women empowerment we have to come up with this type of laws okay and i want to show you this infographic that is talking about women reservation act of 2023 so the objective is to reserve one third of total seats in lok sabha and as a well state legislative assemblies for women and if you see here so what are the relative committees which talks about this reservation so the committee of uh, status of women in India 1971 and committee under Margaret Alva in 1987 
and the Geeta Mukherjee Committee in 1996 and Committee on Status of Women 2013. So these uh, committees they had been suggested for the reservation of women. And if you are talking about articles which are inserted here article 330A so that is talking about women reservation in Lok Sabha and article 33 sorry 332A that is talking about women reservation in the state legislative assemblies and article 239A talks about reservation for women in Delhi and article 334A which talks about reservation to be become effective under delimitation okay after once a census is conducted so that is time period that is around 15 years okay so that is the thing which mainly given and what are the arguments in favor so it is a very helpful for gender equality and even we can include women in broader decision making process and it also helpful against elimination of uh, discrimination okay in the political and as well as public life so what are the arguments which are against it is based on 2021 census but here we didn't have any data regarding this 2021 census and had not it been started and next one is there is no women reservation looks in Rajya Sabha and state legislative council it is talking about reservation only in Lok Sabha and as well as state legislative assemblies so why we need this because there is under representation of women so because of this yes we need to provide reservation for women and next topic is governor threatens financial emergency in Kerala so as I said we are focusing on this keyword that is financial emergency and I already said about the provisions regarding this uh, financial emergency right so now let us see the context so a day after his vehicle was allegedly hit by activist okay of students federation of india that is asfi so here kerala governor he said that we are going to impose financial emergency so he said that there is starting of collapse of this constitutional machinery in the state so because of this we can impose financial emergency in the state so what is this financial emergency so this financial emergency says that so under article 360 which empowers president to proclaim or to impose financial emergency so if our president who is satisfying with the situation which has arisen due to which financial stability or credit of India of any part of its territory is threatened so whenever territory of our country or whenever any situation which arises regarding the financial stability or credit of India then we can impose this financial emergency and if you are talking about parliamentary approval and the duration of this financial emergency so a proclamation declaring financial emergency must be approved by both the houses of parliament so both the house of parliament they have to approve this and after that a proclamation of financial emergency is issued at the time so when the Lok Sabha has been dissolved or dissolution of Lok Sabha takes place during the period of two months okay and here it will survive up to 30 days of time from the first sitting of Lok Sabha and if you are talking about uh, whenever we can go for revocation so that will be leading to the stop of this financial emergency so once approved by the both the house of parliament financial emergency continues to be indefinitely continues indefinitely till it is revoked so whenever it is revoked then it will be stopped so what are the effects of this financial emergency so what will happen or else you can write about what are the impacts or you can write about even what is the significance of this financial emergency and this part is important from your mains so if talking about effects of financial emergency so there is ex extinction of executive authority of union over financial matters so there is extension of executive authorities of union over the financial matters of the state and even there is reduction of salaries so whenever financial emergency is imposed so there will be reduction of salaries of officers and even there will be also checking that is uh, limiting of allowances of all or any class of persons who are serving the states and this one is reservation of all money bills or even reservation of financial bills okay and these bills they will be reserved for the consideration of president because the state is under financial emergency
Okay, next one here is the direction from the president for the reduction of salaries and allowances of any class of persons who are serving a union and the judges of Supreme Court and High Courts. So even that will be the reduction of salaries for the persons who are serving union and even who are serving in judiciary, okay, like Supreme Court and as well as High Court. So till now in India, we do not have imposed financial emergency. So because of this, we don't know the particular thing like what will happen in this financial emergency exactly. So now let us see the next topic. It is about special status for AP will be the main poll agenda. So here you have to know about special status or special category status. So even in our yesterday's class, I discussed about the special category status for Jammu and Kashmir. And now you are going to see like some basic static syllabus regarding the special category status. So what is this? What are the advantages? Everything that we are going to see. And this topic is important from your polity which comes in a GS paper too. So if you see the uh, context here, it says special category status that is SCS for Andhra Pradesh will be our prime agenda in the forthcoming elections. So here in AP they are going to have elections and in election campaign they will talk about the special category status. So this is something which is mainly said by APCC president. So what is the special category status? So this special category status, it is the classification. So this classification which is given by the center to assist development of states. So especially whenever the states are facing some disadvantages like political disadvantage or a geographical disadvantage or socio-economical disadvantage. So here there can be the special category status given by center to the states. And here the constitution, our constitution does not make any provision for this special category status. So it is very very important point. And it was later done on the recommendations of 5th Finance Commission. So 5th Finance Commission gave the recommendation that said the government need to provide special category status. And the status was first accorded to Jammu and Kashmir, Assam, Nagaland in year 1969. In year 1969, here this special category status which has been accorded to Jammu and Kashmir, Assam and as well as Nagaland. So this special category status for plan assistance was granted in the past by National Development Council. That is nothing but Earth 12 Planning Commission also recommended for providing of special category status. So 11 states as of now they are having this special category status. Assam, Nagaland, Himachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Sikkim, Tripura, Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Uttarakhand and recently formed state Telangana. So now here AP they are also demanding for this special category status. Okay, so even recently this 14th Finance Commission has done away with this special category status for the states and it said that only the states to belong to this northeastern, uh, northeastern part of the country or northeastern states and as well as hilly states, they have to get this special category status, not all the states. So even this 14th Finance Commission suggested that to fill the resource gap of such states to tax devolution, the tax devolution can be increased to 42 percentage from 32 percentage for this special category states. So what are the parameters on which parameters so we are going to provide this special category status. So this is based on Gadgil committee or Gadgil formula. So first one is they need to have hilly terrain. So that should be low population density. Okay, population density should be low. And we need a sizable share of tribal population in that so and so state. And strategic location along with the borders with neighboring countries. That means they have to share the boundary with the neighboring countries. That is they need to have international border. And economic and infrastructure backwardness should be there. And there should be non-viable nature of state finances. So whenever these conditions are satisfied by the states and then they are eligible to get this special category status. So if the state which is getting this special category status, so what are the benefits you are having? Yes, tell me what are the benefits? Yes, there are a lot of benefits. So first one is center now it is going to pay 90 percentage of funds. So especially if you are talking about schemes, 
So we will be having two types of schemes that is central sponsored schemes and next one is central sector schemes. So in the central sector there is no problem because 100 percentage of funds that will come from center, center will be giving the funds to states. But the problem is all with the centrally sponsored schemes. So here the funds will be shared between center and as well as states. So between this funding, between center and states regarding the centrally sponsored schemes. So if the state is getting the special category status, then they will be getting 90 percentage of the funds. Okay, from the center itself. But other states they will be getting like 50 to 70 percentage of funds. But now the special category states are going to get 90 percentage of funds to implement the centrally sponsored schemes. And whatever the money which is unspent in a financial year does not lapse. That money will be carried forward. And this one is there will be some significant concessions. Significant concessions will be provided to the states in exercising uh, and even some custom duties, income tax and corporate tax, etc. And even 30 percentage of the central cost budget which goes to this centrally, that is nothing but special category states. So in this way here, if the state which is getting this status of special category, then they will be getting lots and lots of advantages. Okay, now we have to see this topic that is about UAPA. So please let me know some facts regarding this UAPA. So what do you understand whenever you are listening this word UAPA? So what will comes into your mind? So please pause the video and please type about your ideas regarding this UAPA. Do it fast. Okay, so why this UAPA is in use? Why? Because recently division bench of Jammu and Kashmir gave a judgment regarding journalist and the name of that journalist is Fahad Shah. Recently Jammu and Kashmir High Court granted bail to journalist Fahad Shah and even quashed the, that means stuck down the charges framed against him under this unlawful activities prevention act of 1967. So because of this, yes, there is a high chance of getting question regarding this UAPA. Okay, so UAPA is an important act. So it is aiming at effective prevention of unlawful activities. It is focusing on prevention of unlawful activities and unlawful associations in India. And if you are talking about what is the meaning of this unlawful activity. So unlawful activity which refers to to any action, it is refers to any action taken by an individual or any association. So either it can be committed by speaking through words or written thing or signs, visible representation. So what happens? So here whenever it is creating some incitements, okay. For example, whenever it is intended or supports or incites to bring cessation or cessation of a part of a territory okay cessation of a part of a territory of india from union and even that action which is disrupting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of our country and whenever it is causing or it is intended to cause this affection against india so those all will come under this unlawful activities prevention act and this act which gives absolute power to central government to label which activity is unlawful activity. So entire power is given to central government. So what are the issues here with this UAPA? So there is a broad and vague definitions of unlawful activities and even regarding the terrorist acts also. So it can potentially leads to misuse of definition or misuse of this act allowing authorities to target individuals, organizations without a clear criteria. Okay, so this is one important disadvantage and next one is it also leads to violation of civil liberties. So this act which allows for pre-charge arrest. Okay, so even we can do pre-charge arrest of suspects for a prolonged period of time. So because of this it will be violating right to liberty and due process of the people. So it is violation of right. 
and one more important issue is there will be misuse of political purposes so critics they argues that this act which has been used to target political people and activists and minorities rather than focusing on combating terrorism or unlawful activities so it is focusing on misusing of power and even there is impact on freedom of speech and expression so this acts provisions regarding speeches writings actions that could be interpreted as supporting unlawful activities so because of this it will impinge or it will violate right to freedom of speech and expression and next one is if you are booked under this uapa so there will be harsh bail conditions you will be not getting bail easily so this is also one cause of concern and next one is whatever the conviction is happening under this uh, uh, uapa is very very less so just 3% of the cases or real cases okay regarding this uapa and other sort of fake cases so in this way here we can see there is a lot of misuse of this uapa is seen okay so this is about this topic and now let us move on to next topic it is about patent exclusions madras high court shows the way so here we are going to see the basic facts regarding this what is this patent and what is the tenure so what are the advantages and issues so this will be very very important from your science and technology and even from your economy also you will be studying about this patents so what is a patent patent is nothing but it is a statutory right okay it is a statutory right for an invention granted for a limited period of time okay, for a limited period of time you will be getting the you will be getting the statutory right to patent by the government in exchange of full disclosure of his invention for excluding others from making using selling importing the patented product or the process for producing the product for those purposes without his consent that means nothing but in simple words so i have a patent for example i have a patent for this cap of a bottle so i prepared this cap of a bottle so it is my patent so i applied for patent and i got patent so now after getting a patent for me so i will exclude anyone to use this bottle cap and to import this or to sell this or to make this so if anyone want to make this they have to take my permission they have to take my consent okay so that is the meaning of this patent so the patent system in india is governed by patents act of 1970 and it also amended by the patents act amendment act of 2005 and we came up with this patent rules of 2003 and we are following that rules as of now and these patent rules they are regularly amended okay they are regularly amended with the changing environment and most recently we came up with this amendment rules of 2021 so what are the tenure of this patent normally it is given for 20 years and if you want to extend after 20 years you can file for extension okay so here the applications filed under national phase which comes under patent corporation treaty that is pct okay and under this pct the patient patent will be given for 20 years okay for 20 years from the date of filing of that patent so this pct it is international treaty and under this treaty about 150 contracting states they are making it possible to seek patent protection for invention okay so if you are having the applications which is filed by anyone who is national resident then here generally it will be filed with the national patent office of contracting state and actually so we will be having this international bureau of wipo in geneva so we can file there so what is the criteria of this uh, patent ability so the if you have if you want to file a patent so an invention is patentable subject if it meets the criteria so what is the criteria so first one it first one it should be novel no one had done that and it should have inventive steps it should have inventive steps and it should be capable of industrial application it should not attract the provisions of section 3 and section 4 of patents act so these are the criteria that should be satisfied if you want to get a patent for a product and if you move on next topic it is about gene therapy for sickle cell disease 
So this sickle cell disease it is a genetic disorder in hemoglobin. So in our blood which is in red color because of this hemoglobin. So there is some gene effect which is seen in the hemoglobin that is a cause for the sickle cell disease. And now we have this gene therapy that can be done to cure the sickle cell disease. So recent year UK drug regulator sanctioned gene therapy. It is called as Casgue, Casgue heralded as significant breakthrough for treating this sickle cell disease and even thalassemia. Thalassemia and sickle cell disease they are blood disorders. So how this therapy is working? So both this thalassemia and sickle cell disease they are caused because of error in genes of hemoglobin. Okay, so hemoglobin it is a protein which is present in our blood and this hemoglobin is responsible for the red color and even this hemoglobin which helps to carry oxygen to each and every cell in our body. So this therapy which uses patient's own blood stem cells. So we are taking our blood stem cells and we are editing that gene by using this CRISPR-Cas9. Okay, so that gene which is responsible here is BCL11A. So we are taking that gene and we are editing that gene. So we are correcting the error in that gene. So the fetal hemoglobin which is naturally present in everyone at birth. So this fetal hemoglobin will not carry the same abnormalities as adult hemoglobin. So this therapy which uses body's own mechanism to start producing more of its fetal hemoglobin and after that here we are taking out of that fetal hemoglobin and we are going for epharesis. So epharesis is a medical procedure. So in this what we are doing is we are removing the special components from the blood and we are returning the rest into the body. Okay, we are doing this epharesis and we are collecting this fetal blood cells. So they are nothing but the stem cells and we are editing that and we are reintroducing into our body. So this is called as gene therapy and it is a treatment for treating of the sickle cell disease. So what is a sickle cell disease? It is a genetic blood disorder. So it is characterized by abnormality in hemoglobin. Okay, so the, this hemoglobin is a protein which is present in our blood which is responsible for carrying off oxygen to the body cells. And even this it causes red blood cells to adopt sickle shape or crescent shape. So normally the red blood cells are in disc shape, okay, in this shape. But they are becoming like this, sickle shape or crescent shape. So because of this it will be very very difficult to move in the vessels. And that will lead to uh, complications like severe pain and infections, anemia, stroke sometimes. So actually in India itself about 30,000 to 40,000 children they are facing this sickle cell anemia disease annually. So because of this, this gene therapy it is one of the breakthrough to treat this genetic disorder that I can see. Okay, so this is about this topic. And now I want to announce about this course that is prelims booster course 2024. So here try to join this course. I can assure you that you are going to clear prelims for sure if you join this course because we are going to personally mentor each and every student and each and every student's progress is important for us and everyone have to clear the prelims. Okay, so try to join this course and if you have any queries, so please contact me on this number regarding this course 8074765513 this is even whatsapp number you can text me on whatsapp ok so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this lecture so if you really like this class hit the like button and please do share this class to your friends and don't forget to subscribe to this Dathod's IS Academy youtube channel and do enroll to this course of prelims booster course so thank you so much for watching